Now today we're going to be talking about why Gojo's death was so important for Jujutsu Kaisen. Gojo was known as the strongest. He was someone who was completely misunderstood and really could not feel what others felt as there was no way for anyone to know how he felt as he became the strongest on his own. His closest friend Ghetto was the closest who understood him, but eventually Gojo takes over the mantle of being the strongest and now lives with the loneliness that comes with it. As much as Gojo's death was saddening and very shocking, we have to accept it for what it is and move on in the right direction for the story. Many theorize that Gojo will somehow be brought back to life, but I do not see the case for that, as what's done is done, and it seems like the author really wanted to end off Gojo for the plot's sake. Let's go back when Gojo first got sealed, and he had no problem being sealed, as he had faith in all of his students. This was always something Gojo had in himself, his constant belief in his students to take over the mantle for him when he's gone. I don't know if Gojo ever felt like he could truly win against Sukuna, but he definitely knew that if he lost, he could pass the torch to his students, who could be able to replace him. He didn't want his students to go through the same loneliness he went through and instead cultivated many students to become great in their own way. That's why Gojo's death isn't so bad because now this is a pivotal moment for the students to take on Gojo's will and defeat Sukuna and Kenjaku. We have many studded stars like Yuta and Magi who have become great and now they have to show all their worth to be able to defeat an opponent like Sukuna. His students are now the ones controlling their destinies to be able to usher in a new generation of sorcerers. It is now time to really see how these characters respond and what will they do now that Gojo is no longer here. For so long, all they knew was that if they were in trouble, Gojo was the one who could defeat anyone. And then once he was sealed, they went through so much effort to get him unsealed, just for him to die right in front of their eyes. We will truly see how they respond to the moment. Gojo was completely different from Sukuna due to his loyalty and love for his students. He even says how his students were watching him and he wants to show off. He still has attachments to friends and family, something Sukuna has long disappeared from. This is the biggest reason for the outcome in this fight as Sukuna had longed for solitude and bared the loneliness for being the strongest. Gojo however still had to keep in mind about Megumi and what to do after him and also had friends to cheer him on. The Jisu Kaisen isn't a friends make me stronger and lovey dovey plot armor type of story. We have seen many times where characters are killed off and cast aside and there's nothing you can do to save them. This story is driven by that effect and has reached a point of no return. I really don't know what will happen with Megumi as long as Sukuna is in his body. We will have to wait and see for that one as it could come down to a crucial decision on what to do because of that. Gojo has already made a promise that he will nurture strong and clever allies so that no one will ever need to be alone again. This is something he so desired for so that way he didn't have to make others go through what he went through. The title for the strongest can be lonely and especially with no one to truly understand you. Gojo had always put this plan in place and it makes total sense for the students to now fight this battle for him and win in his place. The future of Jujutsu Kaisen comes down to these allies, and with Gojo now gone as the strongest, someone else will have to step up to take over that lead. I think this will now be a group effort instead of one person trying to become the strongest. That's exactly what Gojo wanted. Not for anyone to be misunderstood and go through the loneliness of the strongest. That's why he fought so hard for people like Yuta and Iadori. Gojo was always being the one to win. The gang even all admitted that up until now, winning was always a given for him. It doesn't feel right to tell him to do his best because this fight would be the greatest fight of Gojo's life. They do the uncertainty of Gojo and how it might not end up in their favor, causing everyone to panic and adapt to life without Gojo once again. They now have to defeat Isukuna, who even Gojo himself cannot defeat. How exactly can they do that? I don't see them being able to do it alone. It will take a lot to be able to defeat Sukuna, and this final arc of Jisu Kaisen will surely be great. Gojo's death is really not that bad. I'm honestly excited to see the other characters shine and see how they can really put their skills to the test. We had seen them on their own for some time now as the Colin games really put things in perspective and showed us how the characters reacted. This time though, Sukuna on their way and it won't be easy as he is the king of curses. The plot will fully focus on a world without Gojo and how the characters truly respond. This is something I'm expecting to see be executed well. I love how immediately after Gojo dies, Kashima is the first to automatically go in, not mourning Gojo whatsoever. Is that calmness and level-headedness to be the next man up that a sorcerer will need. I don't see Kashima winning this matchup and I wonder just what the story will turn into now. Gojo was counting on everyone in his absence. He had fun putting his absolute best against Sukuna, but overall it wasn't good enough. To defeat someone like Sukuna, it would probably take more than just power alone. It would be something that Sukuna has never seen before to be able to defeat a monster like him. Jujutsu Kaisen has been amazing and I can't wait to see what goes on in the next chapter. We just witnessed one of the greatest fights in anime history, and now we get to see how well Gojo has prepped these characters for life to come after his departure. Let me know, do you guys think Gojo's death was important to the story, or should he have stayed alive and be the one to defeat Sukuna? Well, I thank you guys for watching the video. 
Please like, comment, subscribe, and I'll be back in the next one. Peace.